Good evening from New York. I'm Chris Hayes. Tonight, it feels like another line has been crossed in American democracy with the discovery that the United States senators feeling the threat of violence to them or their families from Donald Trump and his supporters changed their votes on perhaps the most important vote many of them ever took, the second impeachment of Donald Trump. Of course, that fateful vote acquitting Trump of inciting an insurrection on January 6th allowed for the situation we currently find ourselves in, with that four-time criminally indicted defendant likely to be a coin flip away from the presidency next year. This new revelation about the impact of the MAGA threat of violence in Congress comes from an explosive excerpt of a forthcoming biography of Utah Senator Mitt Romney, as told by author McKay Coppins, quote, when one senator, a member of leadership, said he was leaning toward voting toward to convict Trump, the others urged him to reconsider you can't do that, Romney recalled someone saying. Think of your personal safety, said another. Think of your children. McKay Coppins received unparalleled access to Senator Romney, who gave his apparently unvarnished thoughts and observations to his biographer. And Romney's revelation about the second impeachment vote really connects the dots in the story of how Trump and his movement have used and continue to use intimidation, menace to pursue their political ends. It's a story that we've covered quite a bit on this program, but I think it remains somewhat untold because, of course, many people don't want to publicize their security concerns. Those who have been the target of Donald Trump's invective or targeted by his followers mostly don't want to talk to the press about it and invite greater threat. Now, a few figures have bravely come forward to confirm the dangers they have faced for standing in the way like former Congressman Peter Meyer of Michigan and Adam Kinzinger of Illinois, who both shared details about the death threats they received after voting for Trump's second impeachment. So, look, I'll tell you, the threats are constant. They've increased. Um, you know, I even heard a voicemail just this morning that we got last night threatening execution. That's kind of seems to be the... Uh, the normal thing nowadays was just threaten execution. We have security. We've, we've had to up our security posture, and uh, we're aware, but we're going to move on. It's not going to hinder us, and it's not going to intimidate us. Now, to be clear, all sorts of people in public life across the political spectrum receive threats. Unfortunately, that's sort of part of how things operate these days. That's not new. But there's something different here, right? In the age of Trump, those threats became very real and acute. During his first run for president, Donald Trump explicitly encouraged violence among his supporters. He told them at his rallies, quote, knock the crap out of any protesters and I'll pay the legal fees. And we've seen that endorsement of violence take hold among his supporters. We've seen pipe bombs mailed to his perceived political enemies and planted the DNC and RNC on the eve of January 6th. We saw the home of Speaker Nancy Pelosi invaded. Her husband attacked with a hammer. This is not an abstraction. We, we've seen it. The threat of violence in the Trump era is tangible, and it comes with serious costs, emotional and psychological ones, as well as just concrete dollars and cents financial costs. Many people who have found themselves targeted by Donald Trump or his followers do not necessarily have the means to secure 24-7 security for themselves and their families. Mitt Romney actually lays this out to McKay Coppins. Most members of Congress don't have security details. Their addresses are publicly available online. Romney himself had been shelling out $5,000 a day since the January 6th riot to cover private security for his family, an expense he knew most of his colleagues couldn't afford. For someone like Romney who can pay that staggering amount, it's probably a prudent expense, given the fact that he's become a top MAGA enemy. You may remember, Romney was the only Republican senator to vote for the first impeachment of Donald Trump. And at the time, he delivered a, a moving, forceful, persuasive speech explaining how seriously he took that decision and why it mattered so much to him. As a senator juror, I swore an oath before God to exercise impartial justice. I am profoundly religious. My faith is at the heart of who I am. I take an oath before God as enormously consequential. I knew from the outset that being tasked with judging the president, the leader of my own party, would be the most difficult decision I have ever faced. I was not wrong. 
That was just the beginning of Romney's defiance to the Trump wing of his party and the peril he would face as a result. As Romney told his biographer ahead of January 6th, he received a warning from one of his colleagues, Angus King of Maine, who's an independent who caucuses with the Democrats. And quote, King informs him of a conversation he's just had with a high-ranking Pentagon official. Law enforcement has been tracking online chatter among right-wing extremists. Romney's name has been popping up in some frightening corners of the Internet. He isn't sure Romney will be safe. Romney immediately texted the Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell, telling him about the call from King. Quote, there are calls to burn down your home, Mitch, to smuggle guns into D.C. and to storm the Capitol. I hope that sufficient security plans are in place, but I am concerned the instigator, the president, is the one who commands the reinforcements the D.C. and Capitol Police might require. What did Mitch McConnell say? Never even bothered to respond. So just imagine how Mitt Romney and his other colleagues who received those warnings were feeling going into the Capitol on January 6th. And when he was rushed off the Senate floor after rioters breached the building and nearly ran straight into the violent mob. Capitol Police Officer Eugene Goodman guided him to safety, as you can see in this now infamous clip. Romney and the rest of the senators then spent hours hunkered down in a secure location while the mob rampaged through the Capitol, assaulting officers, including Goodman. In the wake of that awful day, the members of Congress were faced with the question of whether to impeach and convict Donald Trump for the crime of inciting the insurrection. They all knew to a person he did it. They were there. We all saw it. Their lives were at risk. And as several Republicans told Romney, they wanted to vote to convict, but they were afraid. Quote, one Republican congressman confided to Romney that he wanted to vote for Trump's second impeachment, but chose not to out of fear for his family's safety. The congressman reasoned that Trump would be impeached by House Democrats with or without him. Why put his wife and children at risk if it wouldn't change the outcome? Later, during the Senate trial, Romney heard the same calculation while talking with a small group of Republican colleagues when one senator, a member of leadership, said he was leaning toward voting to convict. The others urged him to reconsider. You can't do that, Romney recalled someone saying. Think of your personal safety, said another. Think of your children. The senator eventually decided they were right. Mitt Romney was one of just seven Republican senators to vote to convict Trump. But he was able to make a different calculation than many of his colleagues. He's got no political ambitions past this office. He's retiring next year. He's independently phenomenally wealthy. He can afford $5,000 a day to protect himself and his family. The combination of that unique position, dependent on basically no one, and his character, his faith, means that he was able to do what many others could not or would not. But it is maddening to think that others might have followed and Donald Trump might have been convicted, but for the fear that the violent mob that had just sacked the Capitol would hunt down those who voted yes.